Hey guys, long time no here. This is Mrs. Butcher, and this chapter is on probabilities. Um, this is section 10.1. It is apply the counting principle and then permutations. But before we do any of this, I'm kind of hungry, so let's go get some breakfast. All right, so I'm down at a coffee stand here. They don't have a very good selection, but they do have donuts and muffins and bagels. And I'd like to get a drink too, but all they have is plain coffee and orange juice. So, of these three foods and these two drinks, how many different combinations of breakfast could I have? Okay, now one way to figure this out would be to make a tree diagram. And you can do this by writing the words, or I'm going to do it with the pictures. But we can make a um, diagram of all the combinations that we could have. For example, if I bought a donut, I could have a coffee with it, or I could have juice. If I bought a muffin, I could have coffee with it, or I could have juice. Or I could buy a bagel and a cup of coffee, or a bagel and some juice. So here are all our combinations of breakfast. If you count them up, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six things I could have for breakfast this morning if I can have one food and one drink. So, so now here is my little way of seeing if you're actually watching this video. In your notes, and even if you printed them and then you're watching the video, you need to write down that Mrs. Butcher wants a bagel and coffee for breakfast. All right? So now if you don't have bagel and coffee written down in your notes, I know you just copied these from somebody else or you printed them out and didn't watch the video, which isn't going to do you any good because... My printed notes are just not anywhere near as great as my speaking notes. All right, so now it's lunchtime. You're going to buy pizza. You have a choice of three crusts, four cheeses, five meat toppings, and eight vegetable toppings. And they have a special deal where you choose one of each of those things. How many pizzas with one of each could you choose? So I could make a big tree diagram with this with all the three crusts, four cheeses, five meats, and eight vegetables. But that would take forever, and it would be huge, and it would be just a gigantic pain. So instead of doing that, we're going to use the fundamental counting principle. And that says, if one event can occur in m ways, and another event can occur in n ways, then the number of ways that both events could occur is m times n. And if we have three or more events, it's still the same thing. Um, it can be extended, for example, if you have three events that occur in m, n, and p ways, then the number of ways that all three could occur would be m times n times p. So I've got my pizza. I've got, um, I've got three options for crusts. I have four options for meats. I have, sorry, cheeses. I have five options for meats. And I have eight vegetable options. So if I took each of those and multiplied them all together, then I would get 480. And that's how many different pizzas I could have, 480 pizzas. So that's the, diff the 480 different types of pizzas that I could make out of those choices. And like, what if we said, okay, well, take the crust out of the equation. We, uh, we don't get a choice in the crust then you would just take out the 3 and just multiply the 4 times the 5 times the 8. If that crust wasn't an option, then we'd only have 160 different pizzas. Let's say no crust option. But it's pretty simple. You just take the uh, different combinations and you multiply them together. All right, so a town, a small town, has telephone numbers that all begin with 329, followed by four digits. How many different phone numbers are possible if A, the numbers could be repeated, like 5555, or B, the numbers cannot be repeated? So if you look on my little diagram here, my phone, there are 10 different options for each digit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. So we've got 10 choices per digit. We have four digits to fill in. So what we're going to do is we have 10 choices for the first one, 
times 10 choices for the second one, times 10 choices for the third one, times 10 choices for the fourth one. When we do 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is the same thing as 10 to the fourth, that gives you 10,000 different phone numbers. Which is good to know if you work for the phone company. Now if the numbers cannot be repeated, that changes things. Because you have 10 choices for your first digit, but if you can't repeat, you can't use that number again. So for your second digit, you have 9 choices. And then you've used 2, so now you only have 8 choices for your third digit. And you only have 7 choices for your fourth one. So what that means is we're going to multiply 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. And when you do that, you'll get 5,040 phone numbers. And I don't know why you couldn't repeat numbers in a phone number, but maybe they had a law. I don't know. All right, now we're moving on to something new. Permutations. So that is a big vocabulary word for you today. Permutations. An ordering of n objects is a permutation of the objects. So permutation is when the order of these things is important. Okay? For example, there are six permutations of the letters A, B, and C. We could write A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, A, B, or C, B, A. Those are six different ways to write the same combinations but in different orders. So you can use the fundamental counting principle to find the number of permutations of A, B, and C because you have three choices for the first letter and then two choices for the second and then one choice for the third. So you do three times two times one and you would get six and that's six choices up here. Three times two times one is something that we can write as three factorial. This little exclamation point, it means factorial. It doesn't mean a really loud three. We just say three factorial. In general, n factorial is defined where n is a positive integer, any number, and it, it, this is the technical definition. It's n times the next lower one times the next lower one and so on until you get to 1. Basically like 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 all the way down to 1. The number of permutations of n distinct objects is always n factorial. And it's no secret, your calculator will do factorials for you. Just press the math button and then choose the PRB option and then choose option four, which is a, an exclamation point. So your calculator will do that. You don't have to do the really big ones. You know, you don't have to punch 99 times 98 times 97. You don't have to do that. All right, so eight teams are competing in a baseball playoff. See, look, there's my cute little boy playing first base right there. And how many different ways can the baseball teams finish the competition? Meaning, you know, the Cardinals and then the Cubs and then the Red Sox or... Cardinals, and then the Red Sox, and then the Cubs. In how many different ways could we have all those teams, all eight teams finish? In how many different ways can three of the teams finish first, second, and third? How many different ways could we have that happen? So we're going to use the permutation rule. So for A, for eight spots, eight teams, there are eight factorial different ways, right? Eight teams could be number one, and then seven teams could be number two, and then six, and so on. So you do eight times seven times six all the way down, and eight factorial is 40,320. 40,320 different ways the teams could finish. That's a lot for eight little teams. And then B, how many different ways could three of the teams finish first, second, and third? So first place could be eight of the teams, right? Second place could be seven of the teams because one of them's already gotten first. And then third place could be six of the teams. So we just do eight times seven times six. There are 336 different possible combinations for first, second, and third place. So that's where this formula comes in. The permutations of n objects taken r at a time. The number of permutations, remember that means the order matters, of r objects taken from a group of n distinct objects that's just like what we just did with three places out of eight teams, is denoted by NPR and is given by this formula. So here's one you need to know, NPR. That equals N factorial over N minus R factorial. And yes, you can do this in your calculator. I'll even show you what buttons to push. You hit math, then you choose PRB, 
And then you go to option two, which is the little NPR. Oops, thought I had the pen on. NPR. Anyway, so your calculator will do it for you. But you do need to have this memorized. I am going to look for your work on the paper. So use that calculator to check your work by all means. But you must show your work. You must memorize this formula. All right, so you've got seven homework assignments. I don't have a pretty picture to go with this one. Sorry, to complete over the weekend. Um, seems a bit excessive to me. I don't know, maybe you were absent. Let's pretend you were sick and you have a bunch of makeup work. However, you only have time to do four of them on Saturday. In how many orders can you complete the assignments? In how many different orders? So we could do math, science, English, or math, English, science, or how many different orders could you complete those assignments? And why you would need to know that, I don't know. Maybe you're just procrastinating so that you don't have to do any of them. But we have seven homework assignments. So N is seven. Seven objects. And they are taken four at a time, so that's your R. R equals four at a time. So we are doing 7P4. And remember, NPR is um, N factorial over N minus R factorial. So 7 factorial over 7 minus 4 factorial, which is 7 factorial over 2 factorial which is 5040 over 2. So your final answer, I'm going to write it over here, is 2,520 different orders that you could do your homework on Saturday. And now we have one last thing. It's going to be a little bit harder, but it's the last thing of this video. Permutations with repetition. And that means that the number of distinguishable, per distinguishable permutations of n objects, where one object is repeated s1 times and another is repeated s2 times and so on, is n factorial over s1 factorial times s2 factorial and so on to however many repeated objects you have. All right, so let's do an example problem. Let's find the number of distinguishable permutations. Distinguishable, that means like different ones that you can tell the difference between, of the letters in soccer and then in swimming. So it's saying how many times, like if I rearrange the letters, like for example earlier we did ABC, ACB, and so on, there's a C that repeats here. So does it really matter if I switch these two Cs? If I switched this C and this C, it would not be distinguishable as a different permutation. So we have to take the number of letters, n is six letters, and then c repeats twice. So if we were just, if, if all the letters were different, six factorial would suffice. That would tell us how many different permutations there were. But since C repeats twice, we have to put over 2 factorial. And so we've got 720 over 2. And it's gone. Sorry, 720 over 2, which gives us 360. So if they were all different letters, it would have been 720 different ways. But since the C repeats, we have to divide that by 2. So it's only, only 360 different ways because we can't distinguish one C from the other. Now for swimming, same thing. Our N is going to be, um, there are eight letters in swimming. However, the M is in there twice. So that means that little s1 is two. And the I, see the I right there and right there? I is also in there twice. So S2 is also 2. Like if I had a letter in there three times, that number would be 3 instead of 2. So to solve this one, I'm going to have to do 8 factorial on top. And then on the bottom, I do 2 factorial times another 2 factorial. So 8 factorial is 40,320. 
and then 2 factorial is 2, so 2 times 2. Basically, we're dividing it by 4, and we get 10,080. So it's a fourth of what it would have been had they all been different letters, because two of them repeat twice. And that is it for this long, long, difficult video. And I, I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.